They told me for years there was no money in podcasting. Well, they were all wrong. Uh, so let's talk some Batman. Some Batman. Let's yeah. Talk, let's talk some Batman. All right, man. Because when I reached out, when I reached out to you, it's kind of just like, "Want to be guys in a podcast next week?" I was like, "What are we gonna talk about?" And I was like, oh, "Well, you know, let's kind of see where it goes." You know, you're like, "Did you see Batman?" So we can talk about Batman. Oh so, yeah, I can I, talk for hours about Batman. I, I saw Batman this past weekend. Yeah. Very long. And yeah. Very definitely. long. But like, I'm not mad about it. It's like the, I was watching it. There's some. There's definitely some fat that could have been trimmed from this movie. But I'm not like pissed off that it's it was there to begin with. I'm not like they should have cut it down. I was like, yeah, they could have yeah. cut it down. Well, I thought well, the movie. I thought the movie was excellent. I think I think uh, that three hours can feel like a quick hour and a half if you're really into it. And um, I love Batman so much. I think I kind of enjoy it for the reason someone else might think that there's like a little bit extra to it. You know, I like that it takes the time to slow down. And more than anything, this feels the most of an adaptation from the graphic novels of Batman than any other interpretation of him, like, on screen ever, in in my opinion. I've never seen a comic book movie that felt like every single shot of it is a panel from an amazing graphic novel, you know? I haven't, I actually, like, I've never read a Batman comic. I've actually never read, like, superhero comics. So, mm-hmm. or graphic novels, so I'll take your word for it. But yeah. I, I left the theater going, dude, this is just like, this is just, they could just call it, just call it the Batman Gen Z. The Batman? <laughs> like, it's like, all, all depressing. Yeah, dude, this, like, this <laughs> felt like, it just felt like the most Gen Z, like, this is the Batman in 2022 that everyone, like, is going to yeah. fall in love with because it's just uber depressing, no hope, and political corruption. Until the end, though, and he becomes the hope, and that's why it's a good movie. Does he, though? I mean, <laughs> oh, plus, he does. Why by the way, mean? we're going to spoil the shit out of this movie. Um, yeah. They yeah, haven't he, seen it, so he, he, see absol- it. he absolutely becomes the hope of, of that movie. I think that's kind of the whole point. I mean, okay, um, yeah, but your city's underwater, so it's like at that point, the hope's a little too late. Yeah. Yes and no, though. What you what what I think what you really gotta understand is that this is an extremely young Batman, yeah. and this is a story in which he might not be absolute. You know, he might not be able to save the city and not let the bombs go off. You know, he didn't discover the Riddler until the the trucks were already going off. You know, the the the, the Riddler got him. You know, like that's that's what happened in the story, and so it's not about preventing that from happening but what you do in the wake of that to give the city hope you know and when this movie begins he says i am vengeance and throughout the entire movie everyone's calling him vengeance and then at the end you really realize that the riddler has just you know totally perverted that and that's really what the riddler's kind of mantra is is taking the idea of putting fear into the city and when they have the interrogation scene that's what they really talk about is the riddler paul dano being like Oh, isn't it great, man? You you showed me that all you need is a little bit of fear. You know, all you need is a little bit of violence and the people will start listening to you, you know? So, like, to me, it's really about in the wake of that failure, you know, what do you do after that? And I think that's what Batman truly is about, dude, because um, – Batman has always been my favorite superhero. I'm not super into the Marvel movies. Uh, they're just, like, not really for me. Um, I, I have, like, nothing against them, but they're just not really for me. And Batman's kind of the only superhero that, like, really excites me. I don't know why. And I kind of felt like a fake fan, you know? I felt like a bat poser. You know, I was like, oh, Batman's my favorite, but I've never read a single graphic novel or story about it. I've just seen the Michael Keaton Batman movie. You know what I mean? So I kind <laughs> There's of... plenty of those. Yeah, so I, I wanted to kind of start reading more of the character to really find out where the roots are because, you know, if you listen to any Christopher Nolan uh, interview about uh, the Dark Knight movies, he's like, well, Long Halloween was the biggest inspiration I have because that was the first Batman story that showed you it could be cinematic, you know? Right. So I was like, okay, well, I want to read the Long Halloween. And what you kind of realize um, is that Batman is one of the most malleable characters in all of storytelling. And that's why I find him so infinitely interesting. And what I mean by that is you really realize that like the core foundation of Batman has been told by so many different artists, so many different authors, so many different filmmakers. Once you get into the realm of filmmaking that 
it's almost not about which Batman is better. It's which flavor of Batman are we talking about? So like, if you want to talk mm. about the Nolan films, to me, that's blockbuster Batman. That's like the mm. studio was like, yo, you know that guy who did Inception and Interstellar? Let's give him the keys and see what happens. And that's Interstellar or Inception with Batman in it. As to where this is Matt Reeves' Batman, it's a lot more conceptual and stylized yeah. and living in his own realm. So yeah, it's Batman's emo phase. Yeah, Batman's emo phase when he's a young man. And so, of course, people are going to, like, argue about it online, about which one's better. And I've seen a bunch of old heads being like, the Dark Knight will never be topped. And it's like, you can have a preference, you can have a favorite, but I really don't think it's about which one's better. It's about which Batman are you feeling today, you know? Yeah, you got, got like, a sick, uh, clowny, funny... Clooney Batman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Clooney Batman, and then even farther back with Adam, Adam West. West. And like, you got this yeah. silly, ridiculous Batman. Yeah. Well, dude, <laughs> let me let let me get on a soapbox a second for Batman Forever. Not Batman and Robin. Not talking about Batman and Robin. That one is the butthole one that no one likes to talk about. You yeah, know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's fine. But Batman Forever. Um, I watched a YouTube video by a guy that I really appreciate. I'll shout him out. High Top Alex. If you're really into uh, YouTube video essays, this guy, High Top Alex, does a really nice job. And he has this 45-minute video essay about Batman Forever, about why it is a sophisticated Batman movie that should garner more respect. And at the end of that movie, I was like, oh, my God, I've been wrong about this movie my entire life, right? Because, like... The Tim Burton ones were super dark and depressing. Everyone knows the story. So they got Joel Schumacher to do it. And everyone's like, well, this is just more kid-like. This is just more of a kiddie movie. That's not really the point. You know, he's trying to make a uh, hyper reality in which it's like a comic book, you know? And it's not a dark graphic novel comic book like the Batman that just came out. It's maybe those higher type heightened reality adam west type comics where like there's the freaking bat mite and the bat zebra and all that stuff and that's kind of done on the film so again to like reiterate my point that's just the flavor of batman for today maybe i want to watch paul dano be a serial killer maybe i want to watch jim carrey you know be jim carrey so who's your favorite batman what's your favorite flavor of batman it's got to be Robert Pattinson, honestly. Okay, honestly, that's bold. just that's bold. takes the cake. All right, break it, ta- it, ta- it, it takes the cake for me because of how stylized and, and conceptualized it is. You know, because in reading a lot of these stories, I felt be, I've become closer to the character in a way of like really kind of understanding what the point is. I guess you know, and I, I don't want to sound gatekeepy at all, but like this movie really felt like it was made for people who just freaking love Batman. You know what I mean? Like people who like really care about the character and want to see him succeed in the ways that you can see him succeed in like a lot of the literature. Yeah. Well, what I, what I like about Battinson uh, was the fact that, you know, he was in costume as Batman for like 80% of the movie. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. What I mean, like this yeah. was a Batman movie. Whereas yeah. You see a lot of, um, like uh, uh, what's his name? And Bale, Bale, Christian Bale, in the Batman movies, where it's like Batman kind of goes through the fight scenes. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 like, totally. He's, he's in costume to get shit done. Like Robert Pattinson does everything in the bat suit. Yeah, because he has to. Because his 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 foil is Catwoman. So this, it, I think that adds a lot more when it comes to the idea of like, because there's, there's when you're playing Batman, you're playing pretty much three characters. You're playing you're playing Batman, the vigilante. You're playing Bruce Wayne in public, and then you're playing Bruce Wayne with Alfred, like yeah. people who know he's Batman. Yeah. So you're really kind of pulling off three Good characters, point. whereas this one, he was just Batman the entire movie. Because he, he's just so disillusioned to the world, man, yeah. you know? There was no Playboy. There was no Bruce Wayne. It was just, no, this is fucking Batman. You know, and I, I love how young he really feels as a character, too, because I, I think that's a huge thing with Christian Bale is that, like, I feel like in those Nolan movies, you always kind of feel like Christian Bale is in control a little bit, you know? Yeah. Like, he, in Batman Begins, he's a young man, but I still think, you know, Christian Bale doesn't ever feel like a kid, you know? I think Robert Pattinson and did a great job not showing his actual age and making you feel like Batman is just like some 24 year old dude who like needs to get out more is like so obsessed with just just what what this is you know and at the end of the day I also think you have to remember that Batman is a tragedy you know like Batman is an ironic tragedy you know it's like there you can go with the Adam West flavor and the Joel Schumacher flavor but like here and even in the Dark Knight you know at the end of the Dark Knight it's all about how he became that hope again both two of the greatest superhero movies of all time are both about Batman becoming hope okay that's not you know what I mean but like (laughs) 
Like, okay, do you want the Christian Bale super playboy one? Nothing wrong with that, but that's a different Bruce Wayne. You know, that's yeah. that's a different Bruce Wayne. Yeah, this very, this, very different. Yeah, this this Bruce Wayne can't go to a Met Gala and, you know, buy the I think it was in Batman Begins when he buys the hotel. You know what I mean? Yeah. Robert Pattinson is so far removed he from that. He doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. He just doesn't yeah, yeah. give a fuck. He's like, we gotta keep up appearances for like this foundation. He's like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. it. Doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's like that's how the movie begins, and then I think it's it's so good because by the end of it, you really feel like we got somewhere. You know, you as you see him with one of the best shots of the movie is for sure when he has the flare and he's walking out of the water with mm-hmm. all the Gothamites behind him following, and then you know he's picking up the girl um, at, at the end, bringing her over, and they have the overhead shot of him dirty looking up at the sky. You know, and in the beginning of the movie, he was clean in the rain looking up at the bat signal, and after, before that, he said, I am vengeance, and now at this part over here, I am hope. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it, it definitely worked. Uh, the movie was excellent. The acting was great. I liked having uh, Andy Serkis as Alfred. Uh, yeah. The, the Riddler, I think they I, – I, first of all, though, before we get to the Riddler, I do want to spend a lot of time on the Riddler. Um, Colin, Colin Farrell as the Penguin. Holy goddamn – Indescribable. Oh, you, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Like, I, I found out it was Colin. Like, if I didn't know Colin Farrell played the, uh, I would have shit myself. Like, yeah, it was right. like, oh, wait, that's Tom Cruise from Tropic Thunder. Like, that, <laughs> that kind of, like, wait, you're lying. Like, you have to go to IMDb and look at that shit to make sure no one's not punking me. Like, yeah. what an incredible job by the Penguin. Like, I know Dane, the big shoots are filled with Dane DeVito, but incredible. I thought he yeah. was almost, almost better than the Riddler. Oh yeah, no, dude, and totally. And I think um, I don't think any of the villains in this movie are going anywhere. I think they're really going to stick around for you know the longevity of all these sequels that they're going to make, dude. And I mean, yeah. I, my God, dude, when he's like yelling, "I got you, I got you, you sick weirdo!" and then he just pops out of the fire, dude. I mean, yeah, moments like that just hit you, dude. And I, I saw it in IMAX too, and there was like, oh baby, you could feel it in your chest yeah. throughout that entire sequence, bro. It was just so. It's just so incredible, man. It was great. And, and honestly, shout out to John Turturro, too, for playing Falcone. Oh, it's yeah, like, dude, amazing. One thing I was concerned about with the trailers was, you know, they had three villains, but seemed like three villains. Yeah. And, you know, it's tough to pull that off. Yeah. And a lot of movies don't. But yeah. this one and then Homecoming, uh, the, the, no, no Way Home, the last Spider-Man. Yeah. They, they both pulled it off. Excellent. Like, Falcone... Uh, Penguin and Riddler all got like equal screen time with a clear hierarchy of who's in charge. Absolutely, dude. Like, Absolutely. And that's yeah. that's that's a testament to the writing, for sure. Yeah, no, and I, I would even um, I would argue that Dark Knight Rises doesn't do as good of a job with it, and I think Definitely. that's why that movie fell short for a lot of people. Yeah. And again, back to uh, the graphic novels I've been reading, what you realize in a lot of them is that like sometimes a bad guy will show up for a chapter, and then he's like gone. Like the, the Long Halloween is really interesting because it doesn't take place on one night; it takes place over the course of a year, and every month is a different villain. So in the Long Halloween, there's pretty much twelve different different villains all getting to this and that's like you know the joker the riddler poison ivy like all that stuff all these characters are in this graphic novel and like it doesn't feel too full it doesn't feel like it's full of fat it doesn't feel like it's wasting your time and so that's what i'm extremely interested about in more of these movies is like how matt reeves is going to be able to capitalize on this and like utilize even more characters from one of the greatest rogue galleries of all time no no definitely 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 all right, the Riddler. Yeah. So, I loved the Riddler. Yeah. Um, Paul Paul Dano for a second. Can we just say there will be blood, prisoners? Oh, the that's Batman, where I knew like, him from. Yeah, dude, dude. Like Paul Dano. I drink your Sh- milkshake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, that, that's he's the guy counting the Daniel Day Lewis. Okay, copy, copy. Now I know who he is. Because I was like, you look so familiar. Yeah. And I could, I just couldn't put my finger on it. Have you seen Prisoners? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's um, he's yeah. Prisoners, prisoners, too. prisoners is incredible. I love prisoners. Great movie. I've only oh, seen it oh. once, but it's a great movie. But I was yeah. watching this movie, and I like, I like what they're doing with the Riddler. But I couldn't help thinking, how is this any different from the Joker? I understand that. It's just they didn't do the Joker because the Joker's been done so many times, 
So they did the Joker, but they just called him the Riddler. And I'm trying to think of, yeah, because, yeah, there is the riddles and the whole, like, mm-hmm. method to the madness, as well as Joker's just pure chaos. Yeah. But well, I think I, that's even a little bit of a stretch. Like, this Riddler felt too much of a Joker to me. I think it's in the performance and the acting over the actual intention of the character. Mm. Um, I think I think what's kind of making you feel that way is the way that he screams into the phone, no! justice cannot lie you know yeah yeah yeah. that stuff is a little over the top and feels a little jokery but when it comes down to the character of the joker joker is chaos man you know there there's almost no method to the madness there's no point to it he is the pure antithesis of batman and so when the joker's in the next one i have a feeling that's kind of what the story is going to be about as to where the riddler had like a really clear motive as to why he was doing this stuff why he felt like he was smarter than everybody why he felt like he'd been wronged by everyone so i i, I totally agree that his performance came off as like a bit of like of course this is what a psychopath acts like and like you can totally chalk it up to being like the joker i think the difference is kind of just in the um intention of like the character you know what i mean and it's it's hard to compare it to the actual joker so i'm interested in what the conversation is going to be like when we actually get the joker in this universe and how much he relates to paul dano and they made it seem like their boys are going to be you know in intertwined in the next one too so maybe it'll just be this crazy crazy story i I hope so i like after seeing that scene i want to see them team up so bad yeah. Like, that would yeah, be incredible. Yeah. Also, who would have fuck put them in next to each other in Arkham? You're a dumbass. Yeah. Right? Like, why would you do that? Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. dude, put him next to Killer Croc, all right? What are the fuck? Yeah. What are they going to talk about? You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, you put him next to the Joker? Yeah, God, bad call. Maroon, my Maroney, dude. Nah, bro, but that, that's so good. So, where do you, um, where... Okay, what's... You, I didn't ask you. What's your favorite Batman? What's your favorite, favorite Batman? My favorite Batman... That's tough. I mean, this I, I do think this one's better than Christian Bale. I mean, Christian Bale's Batman, there's nothing wrong with it. Like, yeah, he's he's a great Batman, mm-hmm. but I think he gets a lot of rub from Heath Ledger's Joker. Absolutely. Like, Heath Ledger's Joker is so good, it elevates the other two movies, and it's also <laughs> elevating Christian Bale as Batman. I a thousand percent agree with that. Um, I haven't seen Michael percent. Keaton. I haven't seen George Clooney. I haven't seen Adam West. So really, it's the only one I can compare it to. But... You've never seen Batman nineteen eighty nine? No, I've never seen it. Dude, I know. I didn't even see Michael Keaton as Batman. Bro, but... stop playing the Arkham games and just watch Batman, dog. Dude, Come on. I'm gonna go Batman the animated series. Oh yeah, for sure, Kevin. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's Kevin that's, C, baby. That's, yeah, that's my fi- that's my favorite Batman, definitely okay. because easily it's, because it's it's cartoony. But you, it still hits when it needs to hit. Absolutely. It's entertaining, it's fun, and the fucking Joker is incredible. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, everyone... Luke Skywalker um, as the Joker? <laughs> yeah, well, dude, that's an... Uh, the animated series, Kevin Conroy has become the indefinite voice of Batman. Yeah, he's the read voice about of Batman. Batman. Yeah, you, you read it in that way. And, I mean, Mark Hamill can hold a candle to Heath Ledger. That's just what it is, you know? Definitely. And I'll argue Definitely. that with, with anybody, dude. But, again... It's just about that flavor, dude. Like that flavor of Batman is like this really stylized, artistic cartoon world that takes itself seriously enough or it's for kids and adults. You know what I mean? And then um, there's this version called The Batman that came out. uh, It was a, we were a little too old for it. We were like in our like early teens when it came out and it was on Cartoon Network and it was like another reboot. It's uh, like Bruce Wayne, like three years into being Batman. And this is the Batman where like the Joker has like really long green hair and they like redid everything. And that's another Batman that's just like told in kind of a different way that's focusing on him as like a young kid. And that's kind of, that's just kind of what I think about the Batman is that he's so cool because it's all about the core concept of like who the superhero is, not even like, the way that it's presented, I guess. I I don't know if that made sense. It's like the way that Batman is presented is like the same core ideas, but can be told in like so many different stylized ways. And that's really what I find so interesting about storytelling, you know, back to midnight showing for a second, like when we can find a movie that like you can just talk about 
for 40 minutes. And then at the end of that conversation, say something that just makes you completely think about it in a different way. Like that's cool storytelling to me. Cool storytelling is when I can see, I have a counter. It's like a joke that whenever I see Batman's parents getting shot in a comic, I like add a check mark to the thing. And it's like, even though I've seen Thomas and Martha Wayne be gunned down so many times. <laughs> so like, many times. <laughs> yeah, it's like every time I'm like, okay, well, this one drew it a little cooler. <laughs> you know what I mean, man? You know what I mean? This would happen in daylight. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that was that was one thing I will say about uh, the Batman. It's just like, dude, this I guess Gotham's in Brie. It's just always dark and it's always raining. Yeah, well, dude, I saw it for a second time this past weekend. Um, I think they should ban all plastic from movie theaters. You know, people just need to you know open up their M and M packs in the loudest way possible. <laughs> um, but that, dude, I didn't even notice how much it was raining the first time I watched that movie. I like it's so just part of the aesthetic that I almost like didn't even notice. And then on the second time I was like, wow, it really is raining this entire freaking movie. The entire huh? very, movie. very damp set. It was a very well, damp, damp production. I mean, the whole movie takes place over a week. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's believable that it would be raining that entire time. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. That, if that so, happens, yeah. what well, kind of begs the question, Luke, what state is Gotham in? I just think, uh, I just think East Coast. You know? I, I definitely think East Coast. Um, like the way it was shot, um, it looked very much like New York. Yeah, like they made Gotham look a lot like New York. Like, like yeah. the, the, the Garden, obviously. Um, like the, like the Wayne Manor, but like um, also like when you saw the water coming in. Yeah, it just looked like Lower Manhattan. I feel that. 100%. And you know, uh, someone's like, "I'm just gonna go upstate." Like at the end of the movie, Catwoman's like, "I'm gonna go upstate." It's like, oh, yeah, that's, that's, that feels a lot. That's, yeah, that's, that's, this feels like New York. So I think Gotham might be in New York, at least in this in, in this universe. Yeah. Well, another another thing I love about Gotham is like how timeless it is. You know, like they, if that's really present if you watch the animated series, where like there's televisions, but there's also cars from like the 1940s. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's an, another part of Batman that's so cool is how the city kind of becomes its own character. You know, Gotham is its own living, breathing thing that has all this stuff going on inside of it. It is, and I, I picture I picture uh, Nolan's Gotham as Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, well, it's funny. Um, I saw I saw a tweet that was like uh, Matt Reeves. You know, it's very it's very stylized. It's like New York, but not really. And Christopher Nolan was like, Yeah, I don't know. It's Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> so he filled in Chicago. What do you want from me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so like after I saw Batman, I got home, played the game for a few hours. And before I went to bed, I put on Mask of the Phantasm, the animated oh one from like the 90s. It was a quick the, hour, quick hour and 16 greatest, minutes. Yeah, one of the greatest remember, Batman stories. I don't remember which one it was, but I remember watching Batman as a little kid. And it ended with like Joker dying in like an airplane explosion or something. And like Batman and Batwoman are on the ground. And I have no idea if, I, if I'm imagining that, if it's real or like where I saw it. But... I've been wanting to find that Batman forever. Well, there's tons of movies. Um, That does kind of sound like the end of Phantasm a little bit because there are explosions. There are explosions, but it's not Phantasm because I just watched it. It was uh, was this A Batman. Um, It was animated, and it was was, – it was like the the same cast, the voice of Batman, and then uh, Luke Skywalker as a Joker. Or maybe it was Mm. a flashback. I don't know. But do you remember which – the first first Batman you ever saw? Probably the animated series. And that, that, yeah, that came out like right when we were kids. Yeah. Um, maybe like a few years after. And my um, my brother was on the old... Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> my brother was really into Batman too. So I saw like 1989, and I saw like Batman the animated series and all that stuff. And I have like I have a bunch of pictures of me as like a little kid running around with like this cowl that like one of my mom's friends like sewed. Mm. And I would like uh, put it on, run, run around the house, and everything. So, I've definitely felt like a like a bat kid my entire life. And this this Batman movie really just like just really hit it out of the park and kind of reminds you that like when when something is like really handled with care, you know how awesome it can be when there's that's kind of. My thing with Marvel movies, man. Okay, I'll, I'll talk about it. And I've I've found out that this. Let's go. Opi- Dig in. I'm not a big fan either. It's fine. This this opinion can be considered a little like gatekeepy or like douchey. I'm not Martin Scorsese. I don't think Marvel movies are like ruining cinema, but to me, they just kind of feel like 
uninspired. And I'm not saying all of them are bad. Like Endgame and Infinity War are dope. The new Spider-Man was dope. The Iron Man's back in the day. I'm excited for Multiverse of Madness through, because Sam Raimi's directing it. You know, but like when the superhero movies feel like that, when they're just like being pumped out i just like it doesn't it really excite me because it just kind of feels uninspired in that way you know and i haven't i didn't, didn't watch any of the tv shows i haven't seen loki or wandavision those are supposed to be really good and i love the old x-men mo- movies from back in the day but like those marvel movies i just don't see as much character to them mm. and the batman has so much character it's so stylized it feels so real and then you know you're kind of watching ant-man and it just doesn't hit the same or, or even like no way home a little bit is like, did they really need to put all these characters in like the dude's apartment for like 20 minutes? You know what I mean? Like that scene, like move the plot along. Sure. But like, does it really feel correct? You know, or even like all like the doctor strange stuff in that movie is like, I feel like we're doing this because of what it is, not what it actually should be. If that makes sense. I, su- I, I guess I, Yeah. I, I suppose my thing with Marvel, uh, so it's kind of, I guess, build an analogy here. There's flavors to Batman, right? Yeah. And they're all very, very different flavors. Marvel movies, and there are some exceptions, don't get me wrong, but for the most part, Marvel movies are just vanilla with different toppings. Yeah, 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 <laughs> right? No, for sure, we, for do sure. We, do we have the Iron Man sprinkles or do we have Captain America like fudge? Yeah, 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 and it's it's not that they're bad. It's just that it feels like it's pumped out, you know. Like it really feels like the directors just get back a thousand notes from the studio or producers that say this, this, this isn't being hit, this isn't being this, this isn't being hit, and then like when it, when it's crafted in that way, it kind of takes away like everything that's stylized from it. And comic books are so cool, and. Yeah what I've kind of realized doing midnight showing too is just like the different forms of storytelling and how different they really are. You know, whether it's a book, like a novel, whether it's a movie, whether it's a miniseries, whether it's a comic and sometimes adapting comics to movies are really hard. I think Watchmen is a great example of that with uh, Zack Snyder back in the day. And at the end of the day, I think it's just because the Watchmen is such a long, thick, complex, very long story. Wasn't that a fan. He- yeah, even the the three hour version of this super long graphic novel still feels rushed. You know what I mean? It's like mm-hmm. it could be such a hard medium to translate into filmmaking. And to me, it almost kind of feels like Marvel just takes the easy way out of like uh, this is how we tell a story from a comic book when like like honestly, like when I was rewatching it this weekend, like paying attention for more stuff, almost every shot of the Batman feels like it's pulled from a panel of a gothic graphic novel. Yeah, it definitely had a different feel from any other DC movie I've seen. Um, I didn't. I never saw any of the Bat flicks. Um, but uh, I didn't really care for those. No. I I don't need to. That's that's fine. I don't. I don't. I never cared that uh, Ben Affleck was Batman. I was like, that sounds like a terrible idea. Um, yeah, but my first introduction to Batman. So this is actually pretty funny. This is my story. Um, as a kid, my mom bought me the Scooby Doo and the Alien Invaders VHS tape. Oh, dude! Wait, you got it. Hold up! Yeah, hurry up, asshole of podcasting. <laughs> Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> yeah, there we go, that's, baby. That's, Live. <laughs> we did not plan this, that's, dude. That's the one. Yeah. So that VHS, <laughs> if you pop in that VHS tape, there is an ad. There's a commercial, a preview for Batman Beyond, oh, Return word. of the Joker. Oh, phenomenal. Yeah. So that was, I was just like, what is this movie? Because mm-hmm. it was like the ad was so great. It was just they split up Batman. And they had like, the, 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 the laughs under it. And they were just like, return mm-hmm. of the Joker. And I was just like, oh my God. I need to watch yeah. this movie. And then I went to Blockbuster. <laughs> and I saw it there. So I rented it. And that was my first time watching Batman. And it wasn't even Batman. It was the second Batman. Because yeah. Batman Beyond, I actually watched it not long ago because it's on HBO Max. Dude, it still holds up. It's like Terry. Oh, yeah. is it Terry McGinnis is the yeah. new Batman. Yep. Like you got Bruce Wayne being all old with his dog. Like Alfred's dead, and then um, <laughs> the, whole, the whole story. <laughs> Alfred's dead. The whole story is it's like, all right, Joker comes back, and it's low key Robin. 
because like just craziness. Yeah, dude, that scared that scared the shit out of me as a kid. Actually, you it's know, traumatic, the, 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 man. It's, the, it's, yeah, the it's scene where up. he's just like it's laughing and crying as a yeah. kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude, yeah, it's yeah. fucked up. It's just like Rob. It's okay. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like well, he kills. It's just the nerve gas. He kills his dad. It's like, bro. This is a kid's movie. <laughs> well, dude, again, Batman has the potential to be so freaking yeah. messed up, dude. And that's another thing about, you know, the, the whole Batman doesn't kill thing. That's another thing that I feel like a lot of people kind of miss the point on. Um, the, to me, the whole point of Batman is the fact that he doesn't kill people. Yeah. And when you relate it directly to the return of the Joker, the return of the Joker is using some themes from the dark Knight returns and death in the family where the Joker kills Jason Todd. Right. And of course, you know, it's fucked up that Robin died, but what's even more fucked up is when you realize that Bruce Wayne is the one who put this person in this situation. You know what I mean? And the Joker's still alive. And in the, the comic, the red under the red hood, that movie starts with Stephanie Brown dying from the blast mask, another soldier that Bruce Wayne brought into his never ending fight on crime, his ironic tragedy. Right. Yeah. And he has two people killed now. And, well, and then, constantly then he, puts then in danger had, all these other people. He had Gordon's daughter become uh, paralyzed. Yeah, exactly. She got shot, dude. Another person in the wake of everything that got screwed, and so Rachel blew up. <laughs> yeah, dude. That, that's that's like that's what's crazy about Batman is that he will not kill people. He will not kill the Joker while the Joker, you know, of course the Joker kills thousands of people that Batman doesn't know, but Joker's coming to his house. Batman has let the snake into the chicken coop and he killed two chickens, maybe even more. In Return of the Joker, it's that. But like, you know, one one of the lines from Under, Under the Red Hood that Jason Todd says is he's like, I'm not mad at you because you didn't save me. I'm mad at you because he is still alive, right? And it's like, Batman, how do you justify that? How do you justify the Joker killing like two or three of your soldiers that you brought into this, right? But you won't kill him. And that's the tragedy of it. That's the irony within it. So like, you'll see people be like, oh, Batman doesn't kill people. Well, how come in Arkham Knight, he suplexes them? Well, that's a video game where they want you to feel cool and beating the crap out of people. The actual like foundation of the story is how yeah. ironically he just won't do it dude and there what well, i love about the, the game you don't kill them yeah yeah yeah. I, yeah people are like oh i'm just gonna break your spine but like not kill you and it's like no dog he would just be the punisher if he did that that's not that's the not point. Batman. Yeah, that, not because batman. again with batman dude you're, you're getting me ranting now batman again is so sick because <laughs> he he chose it dude he didn't have a green ring put on his finger because he was the chosen one he's not kal-el falling from the sky like jesus here to save the people batman is a dude who decided himself i have the power I am the person who is going to be bigger than everything. I'm going to be the person who decides to do this. Well, what gives him the right to do that? You know, what gives him the right to bring other kids, kids, you know, and Robert Pattinson, I love the guy because he said, if he's ever going to do a Robin in the Batman, it has to be a, a teenager, has to be a teenager. And I can, you know, I don't want to spoil anything because I don't know anything, but I could see a teenager dying at the hands of uh, the Joker. And then maybe that's like what this entire story is about dude dude you i'm know? not okay here's okay you just, that's a great idea this is what i want for a sequel like the sequel is he brings in he brings he needs help fighting off the joker and the riddler yeah and he has to bring in someone and his only choice is fucking robin yeah, yeah a yeah. teenager and they're gonna cast like the kid from 13 reasons why right <laughs> like everyone's gonna be like this is fucking awful yeah, this yeah, is the yeah. shittiest pick what the fuck is this guy has no charisma Right, like, or they'll do Tom Holland. It'll be amazing, right? <laughs> that would be so funny. That'd be dude. so funny. Like, honestly, uh, I don't know. If you would cat like McLovin. I think he'd be a great Robin if it was like five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but like, they're gonna cast someone who's Robin. They're gonna doubt him. His performance is gonna be incredible. Everyone's gonna love it, and then he dies at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, dude, and it has to be at the hands of a villain. You know, yeah, and like the Joker, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it has to it has to be at the hands of that person. And like, you know, they even kind of set it up in this one with uh the mayor's son, you know? Like Bruce Wayne looks at that kid and just yeah. feels yeah, feels they, it. Yeah, you they know? set up a little bit. That'd be that would be great. Um yeah. that would be really great. Uh well now what if this would never happen, but if they did the did the second movie with the Joker, what if they convinced Joaquin Phoenix to do it? I'm 
interested. Uh, Joker 2 has been rumored. You know, it's I just, been rumored. I, I don't see Joaquin Phoenix reprising the role, though, because he's such a weird uh, dude. They're different. You know, the movies are different, too. You they're, know, very, like, they're very different, but, like, I, I, I feel like whoever you cast as the Joker, he's he almost has to play second fiddle to the Riddler because of the star power, or you're going to set him up for failure because you can't follow that up. Yeah, that's going to be a tough one, dude. And I mean, just from that little snippet at the end of the movie, it seemed like a pretty unknown person. I haven't seen anyone online really trying to guess who the actor is that could potentially play the Joker. Yeah. Um, now, that'd be crazy, man. That'd be crazy. There's just so much potential here. And, you know, like, I really, my, my whole, like, you know, uh, sw- song about it that I just want to get on the soapbox is that, like, Every Batman is different. When they're rebooting Batman, that's kind of the point. He's the most malleable character, like, in almost all of storytelling because he's been retold so many times over the past 80 years. And, like, the foundation of it for me is, like, the tragedy of it, the irony of it. Who gave this guy the power to go into the middle of the night and do stuff? Well, he kind of did it himself. That's the choice he makes. And where do those? Where does it line up? Where does it not line up? Like, I just find that stuff so infinitely interesting. And I, I just, I, I'll, I'll eat it up. I'll, I'll just eat it up constantly, dude. I'll go see that movie again tomorrow. Dare me. I also, I also <laughs> like that. Well, let me ask you. Is Batman a superhero? Absolutely. Okay. Well, here's no. Here's here's. Oh, where, super is super the word that you're focusing no, on? No, no, not even that. Um. Well, that that's part of it. Yeah. That that's okay. If we're gonna have, we're gonna have this debate, Luke. Okay. I think I'd be a little more nuanced than that. The, fair like, enough. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. Like, I got yeah, you. yeah, yeah. He's he's a rich guy who knows martial arts. Like that's really yeah, what Batman yeah. is. But he's also yeah. very smart and intelligent, all that stuff. But like, a part of being a superhero is also the perception of your actions. Absolutely. Like, Batman isn't a superhero. Batman is a vigilante. Absolutely. Because yeah. some people love him. Some people just don't. They think he's a criminal. Like, you don't get that with Spider-Man as a superhero. Yeah. Like, he's recognized as a superhero, other than JJ, right? Other than JJ. Yeah. Um, he's recognized as a superhero. Iron Man, superhero. Captain, Captain America, America. Yeah, superhero. Yeah, yeah. Except for that one time he's a terrorist. Right? But, like, that's just, that's just misunderstanding. But for the most part, like, no one... No other superhero other than Batman has like a run in or questions with the law. Yeah. So yeah, he, yeah. for that reason alone, I think you can't really consider him a superhero. He it, he is more encompassed as a vigilante. Absolutely, man. I mean, that, yeah, dude. That's that's honestly like, and this movie encompasses that, like that whole scene in the in the in the, uh, in the police station. Yeah, this encompasses the whole scene. Dude, it was so hard when he was like, count me down for three. <laughs> I was like, damn, bro. Hell yeah. But again, dude, again, that's what I find so cool about him is that like, you know, he didn't get a ring of power, you know? He yeah. he, he, he didn't get that. He he chose it himself and it's it feels like a, a never-ending war. And um, you, what you'll find too is that like in almost every Joker story, that's just what the Joker pushes. There's, there's death in the family and then there's another one called Death of the Family written by uh, Scott Snyder. No relation to Zack Snyder, I'm pretty sure. But um, in that movie, dude, like Alfred almost dies. Most of the Bat family almost dies. The Joker really pushes Batman. And at the end of it, he makes a really cool point where he's like, don't you get it? He likes fighting with me more than he loves you. He likes fighting crime and being a part of this game, this this dance, this tango we do together over having a family. So this this whole Bat family you know, having all these Robins, it's just a farce. It's just a facade so he can feel somewhat normal, you know? And it's like, dude, that's not for kids. <laughs> like what? Like that's not, that's not, you know? And, um, this funny point I just thought of, uh, Alan Moore wrote the killing joke and he hates the killing joke. It's like really kind of funny that like one of the comics that changed comics is written by a guy who like, doesn't even like it that it's much anymore. Movie. Killing jokes a great movie. Um, um, and, uh, I totally forgot where I was going with that. Oh no, no, no. So he he doesn't like the way he he wrote that movie. Um or, or he doesn't like the way that he wrote that story because it's like a little too dark and the Joker's doing like some really messed up stuff. Um and he ends up the, like there's 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 this whole like idea at the end of it that like does Batman actually finally go that far and like kill the Joker. Is that really like where it kind of ends? You know, is that where the entire story ends? So I don't know. I feel I, 
I don't know, dude. It's it's crazy. I kind of lost that point there, but you 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 know what I mean. It's just like this. It, it encompasses so many ideas and so many themes that I think aren't always present in other forms of media, specifically with like superhero stuff in today's age. Why haven't we seen a Robin on screen? At least not in a long, long time. Does Robin is not uh, fit into this modern day Batman? Is he no. is he too silly, too ridiculous? Is is not enough people like Robin? Like I was like they kind of teased with Joseph Gordon Levitt, but then people just were not having it. Yeah, I don't. Nolan chose not to do it, and it's interesting because um, Nolan's quoted saying that the uh, Long Halloween was one of the biggest inspirations for Batman. And there's a sequel to the Long Halloween Halloween called Dark Victory, and that is the story of how the that Batman got Robin, right? So it's actually pretty interesting that Nolan decided not to have a Robin in any of those movies. But I mean, when you really think about it, I, I can't think of the Dark Knight any other way than it is. Yeah, you I know. But uh, again, I don't know. I'm in this like I'm in this maybe like masochist mind state where I'm like, if there's a Robin, he has to die. <laughs> you know, like if there's a Robin, something messed up has to happen to him that has to like push Bruce into really thinking about the actions that he's taking and what gives him the right to put people in this situation. Dude, it would be hard for Batman to go darker. All right, like how much more depressed can um can Bat Robert Pattinson get? All right, I don't think it's possible. Yeah. Yeah, well, oh, okay. I re- remember where that Alan Moore point was supposed to go now. So what I was saying was Alan Moore didn't like that comic because he thought it was too dark, and he thought it was better for Batman to kind of be campy with Adam West and have the Bat Zebra and the Bat Mite and, like, all that stuff. Um, so, like, that comic kind of changed a lot of the way that we see Batman in these, like, gothic tales because, like, you again, you realize how malleable he is where, like, you can have the Adam West Batman where it's just, like, this goofy guy in a costume chasing after these crazy people or you can have the Paul Dano blowing up people's heads. Yeah. 